Mr. Calamity Jay. Put the coffee on. We're coming in. Coast Guard, Coast Guard. This is the catch Ingram out of Grand Isle with a fire aboard. I repeat, fire aboard. Mayday, mayday. Coast Guard, this is the catch Ingram out of Grand Isle's fire aboard. Mayday. Calling Coast Guard. Come in, please. Catch Ingram, this is the Coast Guard. Grand Isle. Give us your position, description of vessel, and number of people on board. Coast Guard, this is the Ingram. I'm 10 miles east of Southwest Pass. Fire aboard. Mayday. Mayday. Coast Guard. Coast Guard. This is the catch Ingrid out of Grand Isle. Come in, please. Coast Guard. This is Barry Knox aboard the Ingrid. Come in, please. This is Barry Knox aboard the Ingrid. Very lucky man, there will be no scars. Ah, don't ask for help, Mike. Not even once in a while. Now, listen, Duke, I'm not worried about my finger. I'm worried about my chicken saute a la Creole. Oh, listen to him. He has one clove of garlic, and all of a sudden, it's his creation. Mrs. Kingston, chicken saute a la Creole without garlic is just sauteed chicken. Now, without alfalfa sprouts, my jean Levite salad is just tossed green. For the gumbo filet, I take full credit. No alfalfa sprouts, no garlic, just the proper attitude. <laughs> Amateur chefs, you're all alike. <laughs> Mike, I'm terribly sorry. Barry should have been here hours ago. Well, you know Barry in that boat. Alice says boats are like mistresses, so she won't let me have one. <laughs> well, you'd think you could at least tell when it started to get dark. When you and Barry get married, you'll just have to lay the law down. Oh, well, if he tells you when, you tell me when, all right? I cleaned up the mess from the matinee, Mr. Longstreet. You can just leave the dishes from the evening performance. All right, Mrs. Kingston, thank you very much. Oh, that must be Barry now. Would you let him in, Mrs. K? I'll tell you all about the chicken saute uh, tomorrow, all right? I won't sleep a wink all night. To the gem. Mrs. Kingston? A rock, yes. A gem? I don't know. No, no, no. Shoot the gem. That's three to one for gem. You're outvoted, Mike. Well, Daddy, what on earth are you doing here? It's Barry. Well, what is it? Where is he? We're the harbor master called the Coast Guard has been but searching for the Coast for Guard? Our... The Coast Guard. They got a Mayday call from Barry. His boat was on fire. Oh, no. Oh, my God. stem to stern. Why did he call it, Mike? Here's a table. He used to talk about taking a cruise in the uh, South Pacific. Barry, Connie, me and Ingrid. Called her the Ingrid. Said that way she'd still go along with us. A uh, couple of coffees, please, and some donuts. 
It's hard to believe he's dead. Uh, so far, the uh, search and rescue people haven't spotted anything, huh? Oh, just some debris. I just can't believe Barry died that way. Well, death is something that has to be accepted, Mike. After the accident, Barry wouldn't let me quit. He said, blindness is no excuse for avoiding deck duties. Get to work. Hey! You don't call a Captain Hey. What do you want? <laughs> uh, Captain Bly, sir, is uh, this sand enough for you? Stick to the sandpaper, Mike. Now, you forget, Nikki, I belong to that minority that can see in the dark. We're not confused by the daylight reality of things. Barry was a good sailor, better than good. So? So he wouldn't have been sailing east of Southwest Pass. He was due at my place for dinner. He would have been sailing somewhere west of the pass, south of Grand Isle. Maybe in all the excitement. But he sent out a May Day message and made a mistake in his location. Isn't it possible? No. The only debris they found was 15 miles from his last location. Well, I wish there was something I could do. There is, Nikki. You can get me a copy of the tape recording of his Mayday message. Where? Coast Guard Rescue and Recovery. Suppose they say no. <laughs> if they say no to you, Nikki, sailors have changed a lot. I think I'll let that pass as a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> $200,000, Mike. Who's it go to? It's a form of survivor's insurance. Barry and his partner carried identical policies on each other. His partner? I didn't know Barry had a partner. Eugene Riles. Apparently, he bought into the company a couple of years ago. $200,000. would be a tempting reason for someone to want to dissolve a partnership. You uh, think it wasn't an accident, Mike? Have you talked to Riles yet? Yeah. He filed an insurance claim today. Today? I'd say that's a little over-anxious, wouldn't you? Look, Mike, Barry was in heavy construction. You told me yourself he was bidding on that big uh, highway cutoff up north. Now, the cost of doing business on that scale is enormous. Now, you sound as though you found Mr. Riles very convincing. No, I'd say he sounded worried. Mike, I think you're just shadow boxing. Now, it keeps me in shape. On the other hand, if there is a case, and Riles had something to do with the accident. You, uh, you could save me a lot of loot. Now, without a body, you can postpone payment for a while, can't you? Yeah, for a while. Mike, uh, I'm sorry about Barry. Very sorry. But people die. It's the losing side of the coin, and every one of us flips that coin every single day. Well, I think I'll talk to Mr. Riles. That's the least I can do for Barry. Give him two out of three flips, hmm? How's Connie taking it? She waited a long time for the right man to come along. Her father wasn't too happy about Barry at first, but... Connie was. Her father came around. She's taking it hard. Have you talked with her? No, I haven't been able to reach her. Anyway, what can I say that she doesn't know without my saying it? He was a great guy, a good friend. I miss him. Sometimes it helps to say it. Yeah. Look, call off your hounds, will you? Give me a few more days. That equipment is all on a job 100 miles from here. Now, what do you want me to do, wrap it up and send it to you? Next week, I said, all right? All right. Look, Mr. Uh, Longstreet, I hope this doesn't mean the insurance company is trying to stall. No, no, not at all. I'm not here officially, Mr. Riles. I was a friend of mine. Yeah. Yes, I... I wasn't where he had a partner. I'm just the hard-hat, dirt-kicking partner, and I didn't figure on ending up in an office. I bought into this outfit a couple of years ago when Barry was short of cash. I got my last cent invested. I'd say you made a good investment. Yeah, that's what I thought. Till this happened. You know, I think there's something a little strange about the way it happened, don't you? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, experienced sailor like Barry, just disappearing at sea like that. I don't know anything about boats. 
Newspaper said there was a fire. Yes, I know. Well, I'm getting a uh, tape recording of Barry's Mayday signal. Could tell us something. Huh. I didn't know they kept a record of those things. On tape, I mean. Who knows? We may find out Barry isn't really dead after all. Why do you say that? I haven't said anything to anybody, but I'm having a bookkeeper come in to go over the records. Bookkeeper? I mean, was, was there something wrong with the books? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like your friend Barry may have taken off with more than 200,000 in cash and securities. What are you going to name her? I'll tell you at the christening. Got a present for you, Mike. Oh, it's a map. I, uh, it's a relief map. It's not a map, Mike. It's a chart. Ah, a chart, right. Yeah. Gulf Coast. think of sailing without you. You won't need a chaperone by then. No, we'll still need an extra strong hand with the sail. I don't understand that at all. You say Riles is going over the books. Riles sounded like a man who'd been mugged and rolled. I prefer that you didn't mention us to Connie, Mike. Mr. Gilman, you, you handled all of Barry's legal work, didn't you? That was since he started in business. A couple of trucks and a bulldozer. <laughs> Did a good job. He outgrew those pretty fast. Oh, fast and furious. That was Barry. Did he ever lock horns with anybody? Taggart. Taggart Construction. Barry was ambitious, impatient. Didn't like waiting in traffic. He tried to pass Taggart on the curves a few times. And what happened? Taggart ran him off the road on occasion. Muscled him out of some contracts. Barry got up, brushed himself off, and... Hired Taggart's muscle away from him. <laughs> There's nothing illegal about that. I warned Barry to ease off, go slow. You can imagine what he told me. <laughs> the only difference between a ditch digger and a canal builder is guts. <laughs> Mr. Gilman, did Barry have any financial troubles that you know of? Not $220,000 worth. All right, thanks. I, uh, I'm sorry, Miss Connie. Would you ask her to give me a call? She just walks and walks or drives. Just trying to tire herself out. Death is something that has to be accepted, Mike. Yes, I know. She's, uh, she's looking for answers. The questions keep you awake. It's ready, Mike. Okay, Nikki, go ahead and play. Fire aboard, Mayday. Calling Coast Guard, come in, please. 
how can you be sure, Mike? I knew Barry, too, but I couldn't swear that wasn't his voice. I'm not testifying, Duke. I'm just telling you. Then whose voice is it? Could be somebody trying to clip your company for a bundle. <laughs> of course, if you're not interested. Oh, I didn't say that. Could that someone be Riles? Well, I... Here's the map, Mike. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Yeah, listen, would you play the last part of that tape for me again? set of these made up for you before we sail for the South Pacific. If Barry were sailing home to dinner, he'd have taken the shortest way. And that's not the position that was radioed? Right. I think somebody sent the Coast Guard on a wild goose chase. Why? Well, they wanted Barry out of the way. They, they wanted his death to be a matter of record, but they didn't want any evidence found. A phony mayday signal sent the search and rescue team at least 15 miles away from the scene. The scene of what? The only fuel on board Barry's boat was diesel. If there was a fire, it would have burned for hours. Then a torch that could have been seen for miles. What do you mean, if there was a fire? Well, I think the Ingrid, but... I think Barry's boat could have been blown up intentionally. There's another explanation, Mike. You may as well face it. The missing money? Suppose Barry wanted to disappear intentionally. Well, then it would be his voice on the tape, wouldn't it, Duke? Someone could have been with Barry to send a Mayday message, I mean. No, I don't think so. Is that why we're driving all the way out here? You know what Mayday stands for, Nikki? The first day in May? Nope. It's from the French. Mayday means help me. I'm glad I took this job to further my education. Somebody around the marina must have seen Barry go out that day. Sounds reasonable. And there's a jack of all trades named Carl Tessman. He used to give Barry a hand once in a while. If we could just find him. Hi, Mr. Longstreet. Oh, hi, Carl. Carl Tessman, this is uh, Nikki Bell. Hi. Hi. That's too bad about Mr. Knox. Yes. Carl, do you happen to know if Barry went out alone that day? Well, yeah, yeah, he went out alone all right. I mean, I helped him cast off. Can handle a catch with one hand, you know what I mean? There goes that theory. Coast Guard loaned me a tape recording of his mayday signal. It wasn't Barry's voice on that tape. Uh, well, it could have been somebody else down below decks, I guess. Or the mayday signal could have been sent from any boat with a radio. Yeah, I'm afraid you lost me, Mr. Longstreet. Does Emery Taggart still keep his boat around here? Who? Emery Taggart, I, uh, I understand you installed a new autopilot in his boat last year. Yeah. Yeah, he does. Why? Well, I was just wondering if Mr. Taggart is still running people off the road these days. They are an insurance investigator. <laughs> That's one for the books. Who does the investigating, you or the dog? Barry Knox was a friend of mine, Mr. Taggart. Well, he was no friend of mine, and you knew that before you came here. Now, look, Longstreet, I'm in a hurry, so say what you've got to say. Can we talk in your office? This is my office. And it belongs on a construction job 60 miles from here, right now. Now, what is it you want? Mr. Taggart, I think the circumstances surrounding Barry's death were a little... a little unusual. Unusual, maybe. Timely, yes. You two were the final bidders in that highway cutoff job up north, weren't you? And that's what I mean by timely. Well, maybe a little too timely. <laughs> Ah, oh, come on now, Longstreet. I say what I mean. There's no crime in that. Knox played rough with me, and I played rough with him. Well, how rough is rough, Mr. Taggart? Oh, I showed him where the ox went through the cane field once or twice. Now, look, I built this place up from two shovels and a dump truck, and I didn't have a smart lawyer to help me either. And you think maybe Barry's partner might not last so long in the ring with you, right? With Knox's death plastered all over the newspapers, I expect he'll come running any day now. Maybe he's ready to make a deal with you, hmm? He can't cut it alone. The highway people know that. Oh, don't look so surprised, Mr. Longstreet. Some of the biggest deals are made in graveyards.
<laughs> Mr. Page, you're never going to learn those cards well enough to beat him. He can feel what the cards are when he's dealing. He knows my hand even before I look at it. Are you accusing Mr. Longstreet of cheating? <laughs> when was the last time you beat him at cribbage? Well, uh, um, uh, if he does that, it's, it's subconsciously. Oh, yeah? Well, subconsciously, so far this week, he's beat me out of my lunch money and a price of my wife's birthday present. Gamblers get no sympathy from me. You know you waste all your sympathy on those plants? Look, when Mr. Longstreet is in the mood, the potted plants around here need all the sympathy they can get. Oh, yeah? Oh, he slammed the gate again. He's in the mood. Hello, Mike, Nicky. Oh, hi, Duke. Come up with anything? Mr. Longstreet, you want dinner in or out, and for one, two, three... Nicky, you look a little bushed. Oh, we've been to the yacht harbor and back, and seen where the ox went through the cane field. When Mike asked me to come to work for him, he left out a few details of job description. That makes two of us. Mr. Longstreet, do you want dinner in or out, and for how many? Mrs. Kingston, those are two separate questions. I'll settle for one simple answer. Well, I promised Nicky I'd take her out to dinner. Mike, you just made my day. Mine, too. I better get to the cleaners and pick up a few things, okay? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Nicky, that's fine. All right, bye, bye, Duke. So long, Nicky. Duke, did you, uh, did you talk to Lieutenant LeBeau? Yes, I spoke to the lieutenant. Well, what'd he say? Well, after making some derogatory remarks about my sanity, he said he checked out the airport and the transportation center like you asked, and, uh, and? Nobody answering Barry's description was seen taking a trip to anywhere. Now, Duke, if Barry's alive, he'd be hiding somewhere. Connie, Barry, three's a crowd. Look at it this way, Mike. The world hasn't disappeared just because you can't see it anymore. You can feel those tropical breezes, you can hear the birds singing, people talking in a dozen different languages. Mike, why don't you drop it? You're letting your personal feelings lead you straight into some more grief. Oh, that's why you're helping me, isn't it, Duke? I mean, uh, friendship is a very personal thing. The focus on your port songs. Okay, thanks. There. Pax, lie down. Yeah, I remember. Car coming on your starboard beam. Steer a little north, northwest. <laughs> he was quite a guy, Cub. Can I fix you a drink? Oh, uh, yes, thanks. Scott should be fine. Connie, take it easy. Thank you. I've been driving, just driving. And suddenly, nothing seems real to me. People walking in the park, kids playing. Houses I've known all my life, it's... Well, it's as if all reality has just vanished. Yeah, I know. No, thank you. Yeah. How did you do it, Mike? I mean, how did you survive? Yeah, it took a while. I guess, I guess life did it. You, Barry, lots of people kept giving me little transfusions of life from themselves. Well, you uh, make it seem like a happy certainty. <laughs> You have to sit still for the transfusions. You know, uh, Barry and I were getting closer to the altar. I, uh, I think he was about ready to make the big commitment. You know, the other night, I... Well, I didn't think you were so sure of that. Well, I didn't want to talk about it. Bad luck, you know. Well, it was rather a long engagement, even for a very proper southern girl. I would have run off with Barry on the handlebars of a bicycle if he'd just snapped his fingers. Now, that's how proper I am. Well, I know he loved you, Connie. Why do you suppose he was playing the reluctant bridegroom? Barry always wanted to wait for the next big contract to prove himself. Apparently he thought he had that big one in the bag. He acted so strangely the last two or three weeks. Strange? How? Worried, preoccupied. He wouldn't even come to the house anymore. I guess he was afraid of getting bridegroomitis. I wouldn't know anything about bridegrooms, Mike. <laughs> well, it'll happen when you least expect it. <laughs> so I've heard, but so far not even a close call. 
That's hard to believe, isn't it, Pax? <laughs> All Pax knows is where home is. <laughs> well, thanks for dinner. That's my pleasure, Nikki. Drive carefully going home, will you? <laughs> yeah, you too. <laughs> Good night. Good night. See you early. Somebody just stole a tape recording, that's all. Well, at least we know one thing. Somebody's afraid of the sound of his own voice. for two. And last card. Let's see. I move up two. Okay, what have we got now? Okay. That's uh, 15, two. Four. Six. And an eight run makes 14. And um, <laughs> by golly, I'm out. <laughs> yes, sir, Duke. That makes about a dollar sixty on me, I think. <laughs> I know how you cheat. You know that, don't you? Now, if you think I cheat, why don't you call a cop? Mike. Oh, Lieutenant, did you find any fingerprints in there? Uh, it's a season for gloves, I guess, not a clue. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I, I'd say he's about medium height, 170 pounds, agile on his feet, and uh, wore rubber sole shoes. Don't act surprised, Lieutenant. It only encourages him. Anything else? I'm, I'm just here to take notes, Longstreet. Oh, yes, yes, there was something else. There was uh, um, an odor in the office, uh, kind of a chemical. Uh, no, no, it wasn't a chemical. It was... Uh, that's kind of sweet. An agile 170-pounder wearing perfume. <laughs> well, we do the best we can. What did you find on Taggart? Assault and battery in 56, hit and run in Canal Street in 62. Anything else? Well, there was that thing three years ago in the big Causeway construction job, but uh, that was out of our parish. What thing? A lot of heavy equipment belonging to another construction company was sabotaged. Oh, well, wait a minute, yeah. Whose construction company was it? Barry Knox's. Taggart was voted the man most likely at the time, but I, uh, I understand they couldn't make it stick. Hmm. You said sabotage, yeah. What kind of sabotage? They wrecked a lot of equipment, blew it up. Dynamite. Dynamite? That's one way of eliminating the competition. Well, Taggart was just a suspect, remember? That's all he is now. I know. But at the moment, he's a live one. Well, maybe we can make it stick this time. That's ancient history, Longstreet. Mr. Taggart, I don't think Barry's yacht simply caught fire. I think it was blown up. All I know is what I read in the newspapers. They said it burned. And that distress call that supposedly came from his yacht wasn't Barry's voice. I don't know what you're fishing for, Longstreet, but I'm not biting. That contract for the... Uh, Highway cutoff up north. That's important to you, isn't it? Every contract is important. What's the last straw in a man's career, Mr. Taggart? What do you mean? Well, you're a self-made man. You uh, had to move a lot of mud and rock to get where you are today. Put a lot of your own muscle and sweat into it. Along comes an upstart like Barry. He's a college graduate. He finds a way to move the mud and rock a little faster, a little cheaper. Suddenly, a contract's not a guaranteed thing anymore. You have to compete. First you lose one, then another. Uh, which one's the last straw, Mr. Taggart? Pax, 
I showed him where the ox went through the cane field once or twice. Barry was ambitious, impatient. Didn't like waiting in traffic. Think she's going to appreciate it? She's already glistening with gratitude. He's acting so, so strangely. Who knows? We may find out Barry isn't really dead after all. Coffee, Mike? No, no, thank you. You know, the truth of the matter is, if your friend Knox walked in here right now... <laughs> Thanks, Lieutenant. I'll find him. I'd have to hold him for questioning. Max, sit. Tell me, Lieutenant, did, uh, did Riles accuse Barry of stealing the money? Well, let's look at it from his viewpoint. You discover that $220,000 is missing from your company. And who's missing along with it? Your partner. And Riles puts two and two together and comes to us. Uh, it could be a cover-up. No partner minding the store. I'm way ahead of you, Longstreet. Riles has a clean record with us. I hear he's a player. Oh, he's been busted for gambling once, but... Well, that's an expensive habit, Lieutenant. He had a perfect opportunity to feed it. You're reaching, Longstreet. I can't arrest everyone who has bad habits and opportunities. <laughs> well, I don't know, Lieutenant. You do a pretty good job at uh, filling up the drunk tank. <laughs> Very funny. Do me a favor, will you? Well, if I can. The uh, equipment that was sabotaged in a construction job. I know it's not in your parish, but did you get me a list of all the people that were uh, questioned? Well, it'll take some time. Why do you want it? Well, let's just say I'm interested in people with bad habits. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I see. Well, you keep in touch. The original of that tape recording, it's, uh, it's been stolen from the Rescue and Recovery Office. Sure, I gamble. How do you think a bulldozer jockey like me put enough money together to buy into a company like this? Well, you sound like a rare breed, Mr. Riles, a consistent winner. Oh, I lost all right when I invested in this outfit. Here, it's all right here in this folder. All right, get your friend Duke Page to read it to you. Are you sure about the amount? $220,000. It's almost the amount of the insurance. 20000 short ain't almost where I was brought up, Longstreet. Hello. I'd like to know who that is. Sounded like someone hung up when you answered. Oh, that's the third time. Some fool can't remember the right number. Yeah, it could be, or maybe somebody just wants to find out if you're here. I can't stall Riles forever, Mike. We're gonna have to pay off. Now, go ahead, it's your money. All you've got is a voice on a tape recording. They don't even have that anymore. And some notion that Barry's vote was intentionally destroyed by someone who wanted it known, but not discovered. Right. But why, Mike? How? Well, it's like I told Mr. Gilman. It's the uh, questions that keep you awake. Questions like who's been calling Riles just to make sure he's there. All right, I give up. Who? What do you mean you're not going with us? I'll tell you where I'll be. I'll be at the bar at Pirate's Landing waiting for you to get back. Pirate's Landing? Pirates? What are you talking about? If Barry's still alive and hasn't left New Orleans, that's where he'd be hiding out. Max, 
Next, come. Get around. Forward. What is this, anyway? Used to be a nightclub. It's closed and boarded up. Oh, there's a there's another door on the back, dude. You mean Barry bought this place? Sure. He was gonna fix it up, reopen it. Why? <laughs> you don't know an in place when you see one. I hope we can get into this in place. Upstairs. Barry! It's me, Mike, Mike Longstreet. Mike, am I glad to see you? I heard on the radio that my own boat was on fire. So I tried to call him on my radio and found out the mic cord had been cut. And then blew it. An explosion? Blew her apart amidships. She went down like a sack of rocks. I watched her go down. I got blown overboard somehow and found a cushion. It was the only thing left floating. Who picked you up that far out? A couple of fishermen. Why didn't they report it? Portuguese. No English, no interest. Well, you can't stay here. There's, uh, there's room in my place. I think you better go to the police first. No, no. Why not? Well, there's something I've got to straighten out first. Like who's trying to kill you? Don't you think you better get that straightened out, Barry? It had to be Riles or Gilman. And Riles would have been stealing from himself. I've got to get into the office, Mike, and double-check the books. I've been trying to call, but Riles is always there. I don't want anybody to know I'm alive yet. No, it's too late, Barry. Riles already called the police. Told them there's some money missing. Said you took it. $220,000, Barry. Well, I guess that takes the wind out of my sails. I've been holed up here trying to figure out what to do. Barry, you should have called me, or at least Connie. She's half out of her mind with grief. Connie's the last one I want to talk to right now. Why? Well, what am I going to tell her, Mike? I hate to tell you this, little darling, but your father stole $220,000 from me, and now he's trying to kill me. You know, Barry didn't disappear with that money, don't you, Mr. Gilman? The whole thing is a nightmare. Nightmares end, Mr. Gilman. Why don't you end this one? What are you talking about? You stole that money, didn't you? Practically told me so yourself. The minute I mentioned the missing money, you told me the exact amount, $220,000. The accountants hadn't even arrived at that yet. Tell me, Mike. Is there any truth to the notion that guilty people sometimes want to be caught? I don't know. It'd be a comfort to know that some part of me wanted to tell the truth. Well, the police aren't very much interested in the subconscious, Mr. Gilman. It's not the guilt overtaking the money, Mike. That's bad enough. But that's an understandable, devious sort of greed. I saw an opportunity, the money was there. But do you know the absolute horror of knowing that for a brief instant, you felt that you were glad someone was dead. You didn't kill Barry, did you? Kill him? I thought it was an accident. A fortuitous accident. What about Connie? I can hardly face it. 
The night I drove to your house to tell her about Barry, I realized I wasn't thinking about her. I was thinking about myself. Barry is dead, I told myself. You got away with it. My God, Mike, what does a man do when he suddenly comes face to face with himself? Connie's gonna need a lot of help with the uh, complexities of love. Don't confuse her by hating yourself. Hate him? Huh. How could I hate him? I love anybody who's not trying to kill me. Well, so far, the only thing we're sure of is that your future father-in-law owes you a lot of money. Still don't know who tried to kill you. Where does that leave us? I've got fresh hot coffee on the stove and ice-cold lemonade in the fridge. I like cup of coffee, thank you. I'll have some uh, tomato juice, please, Mr. Kay. Everything's always got to be multiple choice around here. Have you heard from Duke yet? Yeah, he's on his way over from the police station. Well, where's Nikki? You told her to sleep in. She's got a cold, remember? Well, not all day. She will be in shortly, Mr. Legree. She called us about a half an hour ago. <laughs> Yeah, no. I don't understand. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Nikki. We got some other business to take care of. Mrs. Kingston? Who moved the flower pot? Who moved the flower pot? I see you just moved it again. Will I come back when the war's over? Oh, Duke, did you bring the list? Yeah. The police questioned half of the people who worked for Taggart right after Barry's equipment was blown up. It's gonna take you a month of Sundays. Uh, Nikki, are you, are you wearing something that just came out of mothballs? No, I just took a cough drop. I've got a cold, if you'll remember, from going to the Yacht Harbor. That was the smell. And the tape recording was stolen. Someone had a cold. Do you want me to read the list? Lieutenant LeBeau went to a lot of trouble. I think I know one name on that list already. Mike, on the deck, about 10 o'clock. Back's left. Carl? Hey, hi, Mr. Longstreet. How's your cold? Huh? <laughs> Say May Day for me. Hey, what's this all about? We've had a cold, haven't you? That's why I didn't recognize your voice on that tape. Hey, come on, what are you talking about? He's saying you blew up Barry Knox's boat, Carl. Yeah? He's crazy. You've been using some of those strong cough drops. I smelled them in my office the night you stole the tape. You're trespassing, Longstreet. Get out of here. I've got business with Carl here, Mr. Taggart. What kind of business? The killing of Barry Knox. What are you talking about? Taggart, we've got evidence to prove it. Tell him, Mr. Taggart. What's the matter, Carl? Haven't you been belted by a dead man before? Taggart paid me. It was Taggart's idea. You're a tough man, Taggart, but a sore loser. Isn't that what you said, Duke? No peace? <sighs> no comment. Barry, I think you should talk to Mr. Gilman. I think it's time the police talk to Mr. Gilman. I can't talk to him now, Mike. My mouth's full of salt water and diesel oil. One of my drinks will kill the taste. Connie was torn up about the accident. She's going to be shattered completely when she finds out her father's responsible for the theft. Mike, maybe we ought to let the police do the shattering. What do you think I've been going through these last couple of days? Everything we worked for, 
dreamed about. Might as well have been blown up in that explosion. Barry, if you love Connie, you're going to have to talk to her and take your chances. You're a special kind of cat, old buddy. Well, what do you think, Mike? Uh, is it too late for an honest opinion? <laughs> I think she's beautiful. Well, good, because he already bought her. Oh. And for a song. Many a brave men are asleep in the deep in this oh, oh. A couple of months of sanding and varnishing, she'll be the pride sanding of the fleet. Sanding and varnishing? <laughs> and wait until you see all the room below deck. I tell you what, I think we should christen her the, uh, the Connie. Kind of stands for unsinkable, don't you think? <laughs> Great. Then you will help. I heard him say it. I heard him say it, too. Uh, now, wait, wait a minute. I only have the weekends. Oh, no, weekends will be fine, Mike. Fine. Okay, we're on. This...